In this lesson, we are going to get an overview of the Revit architecture user interface, and this lesson applies to Revit MEP and Revit structure, as well as being applicable to Revit 2011 through 2014. When you first open Revit, you come to the recently accessed files page. If this is the first time you've opened Revit, you won't see any projects, previous projects listed, but you will see the two sample projects that Autodesk provides. From this page, you can create new projects using the default settings, as well as open component families, which I'll go over in a later lesson. Off to the right, here are resources provided by Autodesk you may find useful, and I suggest you take a look to uh, see what you have there. You can see some tool menus up at the top here, and we'll go over these after we open a project. But at the top left-hand corner is what we call the application menu, and this provides access to common file actions, such as new, open, save, and it also allows you to manage files using more advanced tools such as export and publish. So let's open a project to start out with and go over the working interface. First things first, the primary toolbar area is called the ribbon and is organized into tabs that are categorized by content. Each tab has panels, grouping related tools. As you work in Revit, you'll notice that the tools are contextual and change depending on what you are doing in the drawing area. Now you can undock any of these panels and place them on a second screen or move them around, reorganize them, whatever you like. And sometimes it remembers where you place them and sometimes it doesn't. You'll also notice that some of the toolbars have drop-down menus. In this case, I'm, some of the panels have drop-downs as well. Now the button on a drop-down menu, it uses the default option, whereas if you click the drop-down and then select the option, you have th those choices as well essentially your choice of functions to use. Now the ribbon can be adjusted. There are several different ways you can show it, and you can cycle through these here, or click this button. And all that does is uh, give you different options in terms of size. If you have a, a smaller screen, you might go with something a bit more, uh, more small or diminutive. Now, as I've been talking, you may have noticed that uh, um, panels pop up with information about the tool as I hover over the tool. Um, for, the, for, a first, for the first second, it shows you a brief description. And if you stay hovering over that tool, it, give, that tool, it gives you uh, more information. Now, if you hit F1, it'll take you to the online help about that tool. And you might find that uh, very useful. Now, right below the ribbon is what we call the options bar. And in, in this case, you're not seeing anything. But as soon as I hit a tool, you'll see this bar, the options bar, populate with rel uh, related tools, information that you can adjust for that specific tool that you're adjusting or using. And you'll see that changes for all the various types of tools that we have here. Now. Off to the left here is project information. You've got the properties dialog and the project browser. Now the project browser, we can just close this out actually. With the project browser is one of the most used tools in Revit. Your plans, elevations, sections, sheets, and other project views are organized here. They're organized by type and the organization can be customized for your project. You'll notice as you explore it, you'll see legends, schedules, sheets listed, and other categories of views and information about the project. 
or that include project data. Double click on any view to open it up and hit this X up here to close it. In several of the categories listed here, for example, sheets, you can right click and hit new sheet to create a new sheet. Same thing with legends and schedules. There's several options as you uh, as you'll click through these. For example, as I hit a new sheet, it gives me the dialogue asking what title block to throw on. And we have that. And I can just throw on a site plan, let's say, onto this view. This view is set to a scale. I can adjust that scale and it will adjust the drawing as well as any annotations on that. Now, as we started over to the project information page, I turned off the properties dialog. Let's turn that back on so we can take a look at that. Now, the properties dialog provides information on selected building elements. Let's open a 3D view here. For example, I'll select this window and you'll notice that it changes to double hung, gives me some information about it. If I scroll down, there's a bit more. Uh, let's see if I hit this guy, Bilko roof hatch, there's a bit of information. Um, if I want to throw in a column or a beam, you'll see that it defaults to something that's already loaded into the into the project, but this has got because it's structural, it's got a bit more information tagged into it, which could all be added to a schedule. Now, you can, you can edit any of these building elements fairly easily by hitting Edit Family, or with this drop-down here, switch it out for a different size, and it will update with any changes in this view being reflected in all other views. This is the undo button, which I just clicked. And you can also hit Control Z to undo. Well, since we're working in it, let's just jump to the drawing area, because this, of course, is the area where, where you'll be working most of, most of the time. Within and attached to this window are a few areas with related tools. Now at the top right, you'll see the view cube. This is a tool that indicates your view position in 3D views and allows you to orient and reorient your view. I've got a little extra extraneous information, that's why it's zoomed out so far. But you can hover over any part of the square and it reorients your view. You can take a look at isometrics elevations and so forth in this 3D view by clicking on any corner, face, or edge. Now if you hover over it, you'll see this little home button. That will take you back to the default orientation, essentially resetting your view. And if you right click on the cube itself, there are a number of op different options that you can set as well as creating your own home view. If you want to have some fun with uh, 3D views, you can take a look at uh, the Orient to View um, and choose a floor plan to take a look at uh, what, that, what that does to your, to your 3D view, essentially this case, cropping it to that floor level that I selected. Now, one tip, if you don't, if you don't know any, uh, if, if you don't already know, um, you can zoom with your mouse's scroll wheel, and if you hold shift while pressing the middle mouse button, you can orbit around anything selected by moving your mouse. Just below the view cube, is the uh, steering wheel selection bar and uh, and, a, and a few other tools here. The steering wheel, I'm not 
you, you may be familiar with, you may not, uh, gives you uh, orbit, pan, walk, look, up, down, uh, tools that allow you to sort of orient your view, orbit around, and so forth. Uh, one tool that you might find fun as well is the rewind tool, which takes you back through the sort of history of your view and there we have it um to escape out of this you just hit escape or you can hit this little x so simply click the tool to activate it hover over any of the tools to use them some of them are a little till uh, a little slow to pick up but they are very handy when you're look, using a perspective view which are fairly difficult to maneuver in um, using only a mouse. So I'll hit escape here to get out of that tool. And down at the bottom here is the view control bar, which provides options for changing the view display, such as visual style, shading, scale, and hidden element visibility. Note that when changing a view scale, Revit automatically adjusts the scale of the annotations in the view for you, which is a nice productivity booster. In an upcoming lesson, we'll cover more specific detail on adjusting some of these to make your drawing sheets more compelling. A, uh, a, a couple keyboard shortcuts related to views that I use often are ZA, hit the bunch of letters on the keyboard, ZA, which is zoom all. ZF for zoom fit, and window tile to, well, sorry, WT for window tile, and control tab to cycle through. To cycle through, I should say, untiled windows. Let's tile that control tab. ZF WT. Fairly useful uh, when you're trying to work quickly. Okay, moving on. The quick access toolbar is up here, and there's some default functionality built into it, and you can customize it as well to include frequently used tools by right-clicking and hitting Add to Quick Access Toolbar. That's not particularly a tool I use a lot, but there you go. Um, the Autodesk toolbar, or Info Center, as they call it, gives you access to product information um, or product-related information sources, such as online help, subscription center, Autodesk Exchange apps page, where you can find various apps for use with Revit. If you have a subscription sign-in, uh, a subscription, you can sign in to your subscription, and uh, your benefits will be uh, should be available through that. At the bottom here is what we call the status bar, which gives you information about the element the mouse is hovering over, for example. Or if you're using a tool, oh, I don't have this active. Uh, if you're using a tool, it will ask you or prompt you for the next step that the tool requires. Enter wall endpoint. Hit escape out of that. You may have noticed that as I started to draw that wall, this uh, the ribbon changed to to the modify place wall uh, tools. On the bottom right here, which is getting somewhat cut off by, by the screen here, is the press and drag tool. And I recommend you uncheck this, especially if you're working in a team. It often causes problems for folks starting out in Revit by allowing you to click and drag building elements in one motion versus two separate clicks if unchecked. So keep that unchecked until uh, you are fairly comfortable in Revit. 
So that brings to the, us to the end of this lesson on the user interface. In the next lesson, we'll go over the Revit core components and how they fit together so you can collaborate with other design disciplines. And we'll review the central file, templates, and component families and annotation families and how to use them.